Hello and welcome to our AC analysis of the BJT. We are going to look at equivalent models and we have two of them right there. We have the RE equivalent model of the transistor and we have the hybrid model of the transistor. And the difference, as you can see by looking at it, is the one term that is in there called H-R-E-V-O-E. And uh, since uh, that term um, relates to that voltage right underneath the HIE, and that is a reverse voltage coming back from the collector into the base, and it's very, very small, uh, the difference between these uh, models does not really support the additional complexity of having to deal with it. Okay, so now these are the equivalences. The HIE is exactly equal to beta RE. And uh, the HFE is just another way of describing beta. In fact, most transistor sheets give HFE. They don't give you beta at all. But HFE is equal to beta. So you just take that number and you can use that for beta when doing your beta RE model. Okay? Now, HOE is an admittance or conductance, basically. And RO is a resistance. So they're reciprocals of each other. HOE is 1 over RO, and RO is 1 over HOE. Right, so that's the difference between conductances and resistances. And we call it admittance because we're talking about AC. You know, impedance and admittance are the AC equivalents of... Impedance and admittance are the AC equivalents of the uh, normal... Uh, conductance and resistance, which we talk about with DC. Now, as we are saying here, the HRE has no equivalent in the RE model. Now, we're also coming to a, a definition here of, of terms because we have to understand what is the difference between a common emitter circuit and a common base circuit. We have to do, we have to do that. But basically, as you can see, alpha is the current gain in a common base circuit and beta is the current gain in the common emitter circuit and as we as we shall as we shall see alpha is one or less than one let us have a look here now at the re what is re re is 26 millivolts over ie and this relates to a constant formula that you would have done in your previous course, Basic Introduction to Electronics. Uh, and IE is just the DC emitter current. So we take the DC emitter current, we divide it into 26 millivolts, and that is the AC resistance. It's obviously a simplified way of doing it. Uh, there is more to it than that, but this is the way that we will do it in our problems, just like we assume that that 0 0.7 is the voltage across the uh, um, diode junction, we will say that the AC resistance of that emitter junction is going to be 26 millivolts divided by whatever DC current is flowing through it. Okay, now this is what we have. This is the equivalent circuit that we draw on the, the right for the... Um, bypassed emitter resistor or no emitter resistor at all. So in other words, whether we're using the simple, whether we're using the simple bias arrangement with no emitter resistor or we're using the emitter stabilized resistor, this capacitor here makes that resistor disappear entirely as far as the model is concerned. So uh, whatever AC signals we're putting into it, are going to flow around the resistor and uh, to ground. So as far as we are concerned, this emitter is grounded for AC signals by reason of that capacitor bypass. So for that reason, it's called a bypass capacitor 
because it bypasses the resistor which is only used to do our emitter stabilization function. Now as you can see here we're putting the input signal into the base emitter circuit and we're taking the output from the collector or basically across the entire transistor. So if we put it into the base and we take it out of the collector that's called a common emitter. Well why? Because the emitter is common as you can see here to both the input and output circuit. It's a three terminal device so one terminal is going to have to be common and we start with this common emitter configuration which is the most popular and the most common. Okay. So what sort of calculations would we, will we do? Well these calculations are contained in the model on the right as you can see there. So when we go on now uh, we have to label a few things. You can see the base emitter and collector and how it relates to the model. But we've made a change here. What change have we made? We have removed the resistor and if we remove the resistor, the emitter of the transistor is no longer connected to ground. We have the emitter resistor isolating. Uh, these are connected to ground, but clearly the transistor, which is represented by the model, sits up top here above the, above the uh, resistor. So it's just, just to show you that before we start calculating. So now we switch back to the uh, un bypassed, the bypassed one here. And what are we looking to achieve? Well, we're looking to find out the input impedance, the output impedance, the current and voltage gain. Those are the actual four characteristics that we are interested in computing now. In the last uh, video, we were interested in finding the voltages and currents. In this video, we're interested in finding the gain, current and voltage gain, and the input and output AC impedance. Okay? So by looking at the model, by looking at the model, we can see that for, from the input's perspective, RB is in parallel with beta RE. So that is that is the input impedance. Be, uh, those signal there is in parallel. So RB is in parallel with beta RE. The two resistances are in parallel. And for ZO, we can see that RO is in parallel with RC. Okay, this is the way it's done. Now, we, I, we, we make this statement to you that since RO is a very large value compared to RC, sometimes we just use RC, and it's quite accurate. Notice, although I use the, the uh, approximation symbol there, the difference is not going to be much. The larger RO is and the smaller RC is, the less effect RO will have on the value of RC. And remember that these things are all about tolerances. Uh, con c computing to exact decimal places is a total waste of time. Okay. So now we uh, continue now to take a look at what is actually happening with the currents and voltages. Now we have here V out, which is the voltage coming out, is going to be beta IB times RC. Doesn't that look real familiar to you? That's the voltage across the output resistor, uh, collector resistor, but that's just the same uh, in the AC case as it was in the DC case because we don't have anything else at this point in time to affect it. But notice I put a minus. The minus sign is there because there's a change in phase or polarity of the wave between the input and the output. When the wave increases on the input, it decreases on the output and vice versa. So the phase shift or 180 degree phase shift, which should not be new to you, is the reason for the minus sign and that's what the purpose of that sign is indicating. Now, we have been able, we, we, we write what we write here with this equation to be able to uh, make a statement for VI in terms of beta IB as well, okay? So VI is across beta RE. So remember from Ohm's law, V equals IR, therefore I is equal to V over R. So V over R, beta RE is the resistance of that resistor there, will give us IB. 
and then VI will be beta I B R E. So when we write that, we remember that AV is just the output over the input. So when we write VO over VI, uh, that cancels out and it's just basically a ratio of RC to RE. Couldn't be easier than that, people. Now, what about the current gain? Well, the current gain, we find the current gain by, no by noting that the current gain, like the voltage gain, is just IO over II. And IO, in this case, we've already worked it out, is VO divided by RC. That would be the output current. And the input current would be VI divided by ZI. And uh, AV times that, ZI over RC, would, would be what we're looking at because VO over VI is a fraction multiplied by RC over ZI. We have to, sorry, because they're divided, we have to flip them. So basically, it's just a little bit of algebra there. We have VO divided by RC divided by VI divided by ZI. And when, we, when we're dividing two fractions, we flip it and multiply instead. So we have basically VO over VI, which is AV. And then we flip it. We have ZI over RC. We multiply that. And as we can see here, I didn't leave you under any false impressions as to what ZI was. ZI was RB in parallel with beta RE. We worked it out already. So that divided by the RC and multiplied by the AV will give us AI. And what is AI? AI is the current gain. Okay, so we, know, we now go to the unbypassed case. What, what are we going to do about the unbypassed case? How, what, how are we going to deal with the unbypassed case? Well, look at the input circuit, people. ZI, in this case, is going to be RB in parallel with ZB. And ZB is going to be the serial sum of the resistances, beta RE plus beta plus 1 RE. And I show you there where the currents are concerned that we have beta IB coming down and adding together with an IB to make beta plus 1 IB going through the emitter resistor like there so you couldn't want it any plainer than that here comes the beta IB here comes just the IB so we have beta plus 1 IB going through RE okay so that's that and uh, for the ZO it's just RC well you mightn't see how that comes about but if we make VI0 and we make IB0, well, VI0 will make IB0, and then beta IB will also be 0. And if beta IB, if beta IB is 0, this current source is essentially off. And if you take off a current source, it's the opposite of if you um, disable a voltage source. In the, in the last video, when we disable the voltage source, we just put a piece of wire through it. And when, when we set the current source to zero, it becomes an open circuit. So basically, there's nothing connected there, nothing connected there at all. So basically, the output impedance is just RC. So that so you don't have to worry about that piece of wire there. Output impedance is just RC. Okay. We could put that on for you. VO. Looking into ZO. Okay. So it's just RC, the resistance of RC. Now what have I written up here? Uh, I have actually written what is VI. We have written VI as a sum of voltages, huh? RE times the beta plus 1 IB plus R, beta RE times IB. Those two voltages add up to VI. So that's all we're saying. 
But that ha that's a useful one which we will use on the next page. Okay. All right, so this is the final page for the unbypassed emitter resistor. And I think we'll divide this into part one and part two. So we will just quickly f wrap up now. So VO is minus beta IB RC, which is basically the same as it was in the last case. And uh, we wrote out the VI for you. Um, I explained that on the last page. And we have VO over VI. The IBs cancel. And our AV then becomes beta RC over beta RE plus beta plus 1 RE. Now, if beta, beta and beta plus 1 is not going to usually be very much difference because... If, say, beta is 200, beta plus 1 is only going to be 201. And so the difference is small, very small, uh, between beta and beta plus 1, since beta is typically a rather high number. So we could basically just um, uh, cancel out beta and beta plus 1 at one go, which would leave us with an approximation of RC over RE plus RE, as shown. And uh, what we have here now is just an attempt to work out the AI, or the current gain. And uh, what we are going to relate here is the, the AI, like the AV, is just IO over II. But we're going to find IO over IB, and then we're going to find IB over II. Put them together, and that will give us our answer. Because IB over II is easy to come by. I, IB is just a fraction of II, as you can see here. So the RB over the RB plus ZB, ZB is this entire hair, the, the series thing of that, is this is what I call a current divider formula. So by taking the RB over the RB plus the ZB, that is the fraction of II that's flowing here, which is IB. Right, so it's a fraction of II that constitutes IB, and we just divide by II, and we have this formula. Now the IO, we just have to divide by the IB, and uh, we get simply beta. So down here we simply have, for this thing, which of course is going to go back to AI, it just goes back to this fraction multiplied by this fraction, which is beta times RB over RB plus ZB. And that's it for today. End of part one, guys. In the next uh, video, we will look at the collector, common collector and common base circuit with respect to finding these four quantities gain and impedances. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.